the Director of Scouting for 24-7 Sports. Jerry Meyer, it's Chris. Thanks so much again for being on with us. Hey, my pleasure. Hey, all right. So what has Alabama gotten in uh, in Braxton Key? Um, a very versatile player. You know, he's probably he's somewhere between 6'7", 6'8", 220 pounds, combo forward. A glue guy type. Uh, you know, I don't, at least not right away, I, I wouldn't expect him to like to be a big scorer, but he can score. He's very good on the baseline, mid-range game, offensive rebounder. But what he does is he handles the ball and passes very well. Uh, you know, he's just multi-skilled. And so I, I see him playing sort of that glue guy, that 3-4, um, and uses versatility to help the Bama program. It is, uh, it is a program that needs shooting. Uh, they they feel like they've done that, don't they, with this class and the, the three guys they've gotten commitments from so far? Right. Well, you know, you got Terrence Ferguson, who I think is an elite shooter, uh, one of the better shooters I've scouted in the 12 years I've done this as far as just catching and shooting the ball from deep. And, um, you know, and he's got great athleticism. He's six five seven, so he's going to get that shot off. Uh, the Juco player, Davis, um, the reports I get, he's a very good shooter. With Key, more of an erratic outside shooter, long-distance shooting isn't his strength. I can easily see that improving. You know, he's more of a mid-range guy, but I think right. Braxton is a great complement to these other two with his passing and ball handling. You can feel confident and comfortable with him handling the basketball. And I, I think I can really see him forming into – playing the four position for Alabama when they want to go small because he's going to be big enough, strong enough for that power four position. The game's getting smaller and quicker. And with the way he handles the ball and can facilitate action, I think he'd be great in that position. Are you surprised that Avery Johnson has been able to, uh, at least in terms of commitments, assemble what he has so far? You know, I, I wouldn't term it as surprised, um, but I also wouldn't have predicted it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, but it, 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 and where I come with on this is Avery Johnson has an unbelievable basketball brand. I mean, he, he is he was NBA player, successful NBA coach, you know, played for a long, long time, uh, was on television as a television, as a, uh, a TV personality, so you have a great brand there. Then I think he he's highly energized. You know, I don't know how much he'll love recruiting five years down the road. <laughs> but, you know, right. he came in he came in running, man. Great energy, and he just had that buzz. I think Alabama did a great job embracing him. You know, the Nick Saban stuff I think is important. Just with just you know the, the show of solidarity, and then you can feed off of football success. And Alabama is a great sports institution, a great institution in its own right. So it's not surprising, you know. It's it's more surprising to me that Alabama hasn't recruited better in basketball in the past. I think you are uh, far from from being in the minority in in that regard within this state, and for those that follow Alabama and know the history like you do, Jerry. I mean, it's a. Hmm. Uh, I use this reference all the time. While there is clearly a distant second in terms of all time SEC wins, it, it's Alabama that is number two. So you can yeah. get it done at Alabama. It's been done there before. Oh, uh, I remember when I was a kid. Yeah, I remember the Wimp Sanderson days. You know, and then there was there's been success since then as well. But you know, it's kind of you know to, to go to that Auburn Alabama parallel with uh, Sonny and and Wimp and now Bruce Pearl and uh, Avery Johnson. It, it would kind of be awesome to to see that, you know that rivalry and you know some basketball intensity get going down there. Jerry Meyer joining us, director of scouting, 24-7 sports, talking about the commitment today of Braxton Key for the Crimson Tide. Why, if it is in your opinion, I know that that the kind of the composite deal has Alabama's recruiting class at at top five in America. Mm -hmm. What what makes it as special as it appears to be on paper right now? Well, you know, you got three very good players. Um, The downside is they're very similar in position, but I can see scenarios where you could have all three on the, on the court. I think I think what's needed um, is a big man, a quality big man. I think that's a priority right now. But um, you, you you have three very good players, and then I would say 
recruiting momentum. This is just another huge building block in in the build up of this momentum that Alabama has in basketball recruiting. Because when you look at the Terrence Ferguson recruitment, you look at the Braxton Key uh, recruitment. Those guys were, I'm not saying considered locks, but near locks to different schools, being Kansas and Vanderbilt. And they were top targets for those schools. Avery came in behind the eight ball and did some great work, caught up and beat out Kansas and beat out Vanderbilt for their top targets. Um, I, I think maybe that's the most impressive takeaway from this. And, and I had somebody just send this to me via Twitter, and, and I remember when you, I think it was a week or so ago, you may have tweeted this, but somebody said, hey, Braxton Key said he's going after Marcus Bolden. Jerry said a few mm-hmm. days ago he didn't think Bama could get him, and they want me to ask you why. It's a great question. Why, why is it you think, or has your opinion perhaps changed with this commitment now for well, Braxton Key? Where's Alabama's chances at landing one of the premier big men that are that's still out there uncommitted? Yeah, I'm on the negative side on that one. I mean, I mean, you know, obviously I could be wrong. I I don't think Alabama's chances are very good with Marquise Bolden. I think I just I can't, and I don't want to talk about all the reasons on this. But um, to start with, we're dealing with Kansas, Kentucky, and uh, Duke. And, you know, the intel I get is the family is is very impressed with Duke and and is pushing Duke because of, you know, the academic side and all that. Uh, Kentucky has made up huge ground. Um, And then uh, the word is, you know, he just loves, uh, Marquise loves Bill Self, and Bill Self's been recruiting him for a long time. And then other people I talk to are pretty knowledgeable sources in Texas. You know, they they reaffirm a uh, three-team race. I think Terrence Ferguson and Braxton Key definitely want Marquise Bolden. Sure. They want to have him. I'm, I'm, no pun intended, Marquise Big Man. But, you know, I think that's where a lot of this optimism is being generated from these recruits. And I don't know that they can out-recruit Coach K. Calipari or Bill Self. I'll put my money on the other three. Bolden did did play for Scott Pospickle, right? Who's who's obviously part of uh, Avery Johnson's staff now. Mm-hmm. There is that connection. Yeah, in- but I've heard I've heard stories that that connection works both ways, as far as positive and negative. I understand. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, so you know, I, you, just, you know that that's all true, um, but. You know, I, and I, I'm not saying I, I don't want to say too much, but I, I don't know if that's enough to make it happen. Put it that way. Understand this, this staff that that Avery Johnson is assembled. We talk about him, and, and it's about the head coach. You've got to be able to finish the deal. But well, uh, I agree. I, I would that. think it speaks Very much so, it speaks yes. pretty well to the staff that they've been able to to help kind of build what they have so far. Uh, unbelievable job. Um, by by the whole staff, as you put it, and you know, and then of course Avery's leading them, and because they 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 closed on two enormous recruiting battles, you know, they didn't just get in the top two, top three, get a visit, oh, and then you know lose out in the end. They closed the deal against Kansas and against Vanderbilt, and it wasn't just Vanderbilt and Kansas recruiting these guys. You know, I mean Texas is in there, Kansas was involved with Braxton Key as well, um, amongst many other schools. I do want to get your take, and we're talking with Jerry Meyer from 24-7 Sports, Director of Scouting. Kentucky is going to be Kentucky. Certainly, Calipari is going to recruit the way Calipari has always done, no matter where he's been, and be highly successful. But uh, is Alabama right there in that in that next conversation with everybody else in, in well, terms of r- where yeah, things are going? R- r- I, think, I mean, as far as recruiting goes, yes. right now, it, yeah. You know, they're right there, but you know what? Mississippi State beat Kentucky for uh, Malik Newman. Right. Um, Auburn's pulling in players. Um, You know, Vanderbilt's got a great thing going on right now in a a very stable situation. So, yeah, Alabama's got a top five class. They're right in there. You know, the the question is longevity. and, And, you know, we'll see what happens on the court this year. The predictions are that Alabama's not going to have a good season. Um, if that were to be true, it's going to be very critical, you know, how 
Coach Johnson handles that, and can he maintain, you know, a, an, a, an uh, what am I looking for, like an aura of positivity? You know, you got to got to keep the vibe cool and positive and optimistic. So it's not, you know, because people aren't expecting Alabama to be good. So you you can have a bad year and be okay, but. You can't let negativity creep in. You got to keep it positive and optimistic. And I see no reason why you don't keep recruiting just as well as you are now, if not better. Be remiss if I didn't ask you uh, about yesterday. With on on the same day that one, of, I'll just simply say one of the more provocative scandals that have uh, come out in quite a while <laughs> involving Louisville. They also picked yeah. up a major recruit. How surprising was that? And no, it, it wasn't. you got to feel of the fallout. It, you know the. the you know, to, to put it in perspective, I think uh, Frankie Hughes, that's the commit to Louisville, his composite ranking with 24-7 is 193. So he's a good player, but, you know, he's not a marquee recruit. And, um, you know, he had had the press conference scheduled um, like a week in advance. You know, I, I feel it's kind of, you know, it's just not a good situation. I, I thought maybe they should have postponed it. Because kind of just a weird deal. So, you know, people tried to make, I think, a little more out of it than it was. I mean, the, the kid, he's, he's a solid three-star recruit. He had a press conference scheduled a week in advance. He didn't have any idea any of this was going to happen. Now, I think that, you know, I think the question is, should the Louisville coaches and his coach maybe got together and say, look, you know, because the player had postponed his press conference the week before. <laughs> so this is, it would have only been the second post. And, you know, it had been understandable, right? You know. Right. Um, so kind of a weird deal, but that, I just leave it at it's a weird deal, and there's going to be weirder deals. I mean, hopefully not weirder than the, the scandal. It, um, last but, thing you know, I, I think, I you know, curious. people, I'm sorry, go ahead, yeah. No, 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 you finish, go ahead. I'm... Well, I think, you know, I, I'm not a big moralist. And, you know, all fair and love, war, and recruiting, I guess. <laughs> you can, we can phrase it like that. But, I mean, people need to take a look at what's going on. And um, I'm not saying what happened at Louisville is happening everywhere. I, I, it's not. I don't think it is. But, I mean, well, there's a lot that goes on in recruiting. And, you know, I, I think as a, as a culture and as a sports culture, we, we have to make a decision, okay, are we just going to be laissez-faire with it and just let anything go? Or do we need to start really thinking about what's going on with the recruitment of teenage um, players? You know, I, I think instead of getting, you know, trying to bash Louisville and getting caught up into that, I think, I think we need to take a step back and kind of look at the big picture on uh, what's going on with college sports and recruiting. Very quickly, tell me uh, how Shaka Smart's doing at Texas. Not a not he's exactly doing, a stable fine. situation with the old athletic well, department, but how's he doing specifically? Oh, uh, you know, my quick take on that is he, he's doing fine. I think it's going to be wait and see. I have great faith in him as a coach. I think he really knows what he's doing. Uh, you know, right. as an on the court coach and a practice coach, and I, you know, I enjoy his system. I think the fans are going to enjoy. Uh, watching how hard his players play and, you know, the up-tempo nature of it and how hard they get after it. Um, I've heard some rumblings from, you know, grassroots people in Texas that, you know, it's it's always tough for a staff that, you know, bring in a new staff into a new region. Look, I mean, I, you know, Barnes isn't exactly tearing it up at Tennessee right now. You know, it's for sort of a parallel there as far as recruiting goes. So, they, Texas has gotten some players that are in on some good players, and they got James Banks most recently that Alabama was involved with as well in Vanderbilt. Um, as far as recruiting goes, I think it's a wait and see. But, you know, kind of my take on Shaka, uh, he was really, really good at VCU with, you know, not with five stars, you know, maybe a four star sprinkled in here and there. And, um, you know, they did fine in March Madness. I, I think he's going to do well there. I do think maybe he's working through some bumps and obstacles because Texas is a tough place and there's a lot of politics and a lot of networking there and they might need to show a little more love because, you know, to the Texas grassroots situation um, because there's a lot of talent there, but a lot of those guys are looking elsewhere right now.